Port Banners and Junk uh, is a little app that um, kind of came up during my searches, and I thought you guys might get a kick out of uh, looking at that. What it does is it uh, permits you to go ahead and create nmap scans, and it throws them into a database of your choice, and then allows you to uh, create queries on that database. Um, pretty, make, pretty simple for you to uh, generate something for cheap and uh, build it on a cron job. So I'm going to just run through this, a little bit about the app and what it can do, and um, maybe I can answer some questions for you guys. So installing it's pretty simple. It's in the Debian repository. So uh, you can do an app get install pbnj. Uh, you'll also, I needed to install uh, this libshell uh, dash Perl to get that to actually function. But uh, it's pretty simple. Um, runs through for a few minutes. And uh, scan pbnj was which was just one of the key apps, um, the applications from the start. It can do uh, several things. This is a, you can pull an IP list or you can pull a, a text file that you want to go ahead and import from. Uh, pulls on an mmap scan, and then uh, you've got several different arguments that you can pass, spend to it, uh, both for mmap scans and uh, other types of scans it can do internally. When you choose a target, oops, when you choose a target, um, you go ahead and uh, usually run it as administrator. And the first time you inst um, run this, it'll instantiate a uh, SQLite database for you, and um, go ahead and spin that up with the targets that it's found. So, um, you know, hitting my uh, little test machine that I had going. Um, with my targets included uh, just the IP of uh, um, my VM that I was running um, from the VMware uh, workstation. Uh, it sh went ahead and showed that it had uh, service running on uh, 22 as SSH. And uh, when you go ahead and stop that and then rerun that same query again, it throws up a service uh, has changed for the services down. So you can obviously reschedule this as a cron job to go ahead and uh, re-scan that each time and then output that to either a CSV file or send it to pipe that to a, uh, an email or whatever you'd like to kind of do to make a quick uh, search. And I thought this was kind of interesting because you could obviously throw this on a quick little VM that you might have in your network and uh, scan your uh, servers um, that, of a small subset that you might have if you but have no budget and um, running just as uh, your single uh, man in the shop. It has two different files that it kind of calls from. One is um, the query, uh, which is just a YAML document um, with several different options for different types of queries. You can go through them. There's many, many more besides just the latest info. But uh, in there, you can see it's a simple SQL statement um, that you can go ahead and query and uh, pull the results from you to the uh, output scan output PBNJ. The other document is the config. And then from there, uh, you choose your SQLite database or uh, you can choose a MySQL, or you can throw it as MSSQL, or Postgres, or any other type of uh, SQL environment that you want to go ahead and use. It's pretty simple. Uh, the schema is very basic. Uh, so you, I opened up the SQLite just so you can see what the two uh, options are there. It really only has two tables, a, head, a, a, a um, machines and a services table. And then uh, within there, you can go ahead and see that it, uh, the scans that I kind of performed, I, I tested this on a local host, and it's got one host you know, the 127, um, and then I found another IP that was available there. And uh, you can see that it has each time that the service was up and down, uh, showing a timestamp that was on there. So it makes it pretty simple for me to go there. And uh, that was all this quick little talk was supposed to be about. All right. So I got another short, sweet talk as well. Um, mine's going to be on the OWASP uh, project, uh, BWA, Broken Web Applications Project. Uh, it's currently inactive just because it's only updated every couple years. Last time it was updated was August of 2015. Um, basically what it is, um, are you familiar with Security Shepherd, BWAP, all those different projects? 
Well, this basically is a VM that wraps all those into one, one application. So all you basically have to do, you just spin up um, the OVA file uh, in VirtualBox or whatever. And actually, I talked to Jimmy. It's actually a pretty huge file. Um, it's actually like two gigs. <laughs> um, I was looking at something else when I said 20 megs. <laughs> um, but basically, it allows you to, um, so I do a lot of uh, testi or testing myself, but I do a lot of training with our developers. Um, you know, we look at uh, pro programs like the WebGoat, uh, BWAP. Uh, Security Shepherd we use for a CTF here. Um, but what this does is allows you to use all those different programs in one, one VM. So basically, each of these little plus signs, when you open it up, it gives you the username, password, credentials, and then you can just open it up oops, in a new tab, and you're right into BWAP. So you can just start using BWAP, um, full version, and it's kind of off the screen, so it's hard to see. Um, but I have Zap loaded up over here. So then you can just start using Zap with it. Um, use your burp, whatever, whatever you want to use. It's fully functional. <coughs> Going back over here, you got Security Shepherd. Actually, let's open up here. And you just can log in. Everything that you update in here, it stores until you um, reload the VM. So once I kill this VM, everything in here resets back to the beginning. But um, it's available on SourceForge. Um, the latest one, 1 1.2, came out August of last year. Um, pretty good tool. So that's that's my talk. <laughs> Any questions? No. Nope? All right. So we've got a couple announcements. Uh, we just pulled that closing. This one. Uh, that's the intro. There's another one. Yeah. Uh, so, obviously, this new format's pretty simple for people. If you guys would like to uh, give it a chance and uh, throw an app that you think anyone might be interested in, maybe something that's brand new to you um, that uh, you want to go ahead and present, just spark the interest, give some talks about it. Uh, we're looking for talks from five to 45 minutes. Um, any sort of concepts, any sort of uh, um, information on. So go ahead and uh, shoot an email to board at neoisf.org, or you can reach out to me, and uh, we'll put you on the schedule. We are still looking for people for uh, next month's meeting. Uh, we spoke about uh, job opportunities and openings. Does anyone else have anything else they want to share on that? All right, so a couple of events that are coming up. Um, we've got uh, Cleveland Locksport, uh, which is going on uh, this weekend, um, October 19th. What? Yeah, you're wrong. Sorry, I mistyped that. It's not on the 19th. It will be this, this weekend, um, which is the 22nd. Be the 22nd. It's going to be at the um, Brexville Library. Uh, you guys can visit the website at uh, clevelandlotspork.org uh, to find more information there. The Information Security Summit. Uh, there's lots of training going to be going on uh, a few days leading up to that, but the key dates are uh, the 24th um, through the 28th, uh, with the 27th and 28th um, being the main events. And of course, besides Detroit and Converge, they just opened up their CFP. Uh, they're obviously very local, and they're looking for uh, great talks. Uh, both people are new to the field and uh, old. Does anyone else have any of the events they want to go and share to announce? All right. Um, with that being said, our next meeting is going to be Wednesday, November 16th. Um, so if you guys want to, same location, we are still looking for speakers. Once again, we got a couple people we want to thank. Uh, OE Connections for the facility and Mike Woolard. Uh, please give them a round of applause. David Kennedy and Trusted Sec and Binary Defense, thank you so much. And of course, uh, Jimmy, Jamie, Charles, Mike, and Justin, um, thank you so much. <laughs> Quick reminder, um, we are looking for more members. If you guys want to join in and uh, get on the list, go ahead and send us an email or you can visit our website. Um, we are looking for anyone of any types. Um, like I said, we've got a wide swath of people who have experience, so we're looking for both people the new and old. Got an announcement? Kind of a question and announcement. So if you didn't know, um, actually Justin was streaming tonight.
tonight's meeting uh, on YouTube, uh, is that going to be something we're doing moving forward? Or is this just if it's perceived as being positive. <laughs> so spread the word if, if you want people that you know they can't make it to the meetings, if they're interested in watching on YouTube, any ISF channel on YouTube, no, get enough no. subscribers, we can actually have a real URL. <laughs> yeah, we need to have 100 subscribers in order to get a custom URL. So right now it's a little bit long. But uh, if you check out neoisf.org, uh, Twitter, um, you can see that we've tweeted that uh, link out there that it was been alive and available. Do you something? Or you just? If you want, I can show that tool that I mentioned. Yeah, absolutely. Do you want to get up and show it? Or? So he's got a tool he wants to go ahead and uh, show. This is the free, this one's free. Free as in? As in free, actually free, as in legitimately this is free. How do you get Wildfire free? Yeah, it's, that one's not free. So, are you good? I I can stand right. Is this okay? Nah, I, it's not going to take long. I don't need to sit. So the tool is called Mind Meld. Mind Meld. You can get it at, if you go to this live.paloaltonetworks.com, you can find it there, um, download it, you download the OVAs, spin it up in Azure, Amazon, do the local install for Ubuntu. Um, and then what it actually looks like is, you basically have a whole bunch of different feeds. So if I take this, so basically what you do is you, you have multiple different feeds and you take from those multiple different feeds, it takes it through an aggregator. That aggregator will dedupe it and then you spit it out into these feeds here. So we can bring in, pull in all of the different IPs, URLs, DNS, whatever, wherever it's coming from. This will deduplicate it in that aggregator, spits it out into an outbound feed that then has a URL list or an IP list or whatever it is that you can load and basically look at from that standpoint. So as you look at uh, the options that are available in it, or what the, basically the services that are pre-built, you can add your own by changing con the config file. But 
Inside of it, you've got, these are the pre-built ones that are added in. So you've got Alien Vault, CERT files from Australia, or CERT people from Australia, Amazon files, binary defense, other block list, Office 365, if you're trying to keep track of your Office 365 URLs. <laughs> ransomware trackers, if you're trying to track ransomware, these are ransomware trackers. Proof point emerging threat lists. So you just pick whatever ones you one of these, feed it into the aggregator, and spit it back out, and then you've got your list. And that can be used with any tools. No, not right now, I don't think. It's, it's web where you go in and you can modify the back end. Like, it's Linux files that you can modify the config files inside. So that's it. Um, so you're, you're, you pick an output aggregator um, from one of these. So if I say, like, search output. So you've got these various different feeds that you can basically uh, pick what confidence levels that you want if you've got feeds that you trust more than other feeds. So you can create different ones from there. But you'll go in here, pick one of your feeds, and then you can clone it, um, which is basically you create it there. And then from that same point, you pick what feeds are going into it. And so it's basically, here's the, th the miners are basically your inputs. So these are the things I'm taking it from. I'm going through an aggregator, and then I'm outputting that to something. <laughs> all right? Is it, is it all file output? Yes, all text file output. That auto, it auto updates. So, I mean, when you're talking flat file, it's automatically pulling stuff in and refreshing that. And right. you, have some, you have to have something to suggest that file. Yes. Yeah, you have to have some kind of dynamic list or something that's going to ingest your output that you're using for a block list. The, there's, the directions are on the... The directions to just install it are there. Uh, that Ubuntu server has a, the actual directions to install it. Yes, well... I don't know if it's open source, but it's, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, open source might be going a little too far. Yeah. What's that? The fee, so other people who have that list, that all those, all those lists that I was shown as like the miners, it's all those different people that have the feeds. So they've just kind of aggregated a whole bunch that they've pre-populated, but you can go in and modify your own ones. Yeah, all, the, all these ones, like, um, let me go back to here. So like Spam Hoss is a pre-populated one. I can actually open it up. Um, let's get rid of this. Um, for paid feeds, so I know the only one I know for sure that I've heard is like uh, Dell SecureWorks actually integrates into this. I don't know how they do it, but I know they they do it. So all you need is like a basically where you're pulling from. So we're not pulling for anything from APIs. Like it's just give us flat files. We'll take that flat file, conglomerate it down, and spit it back out. And so. I mean, here's the, here's your URL. So it, like everything's going to look like that. There's a URL that it's pulling from, and there's the URLs. Good. All right. Thanks. Is that?